questions? He's got two. There we go. If anybody would like to ask anything, um, I think we have some time, so you're welcome to. Any questions from anyone? Uh, yeah, here. I, I see a lot of uh, gay people are worried about um, Pence and his, his anti-gay beliefs or whether or not, I mean, what, I just wanted to hear what your stance was on that. Well, that just demonstrates that gays can be idiotic just like everyone else. Um, you know, the left, the left has sort of done this thi thing where, you know, these special minority groups can do no wrong. And if you disagree with a gay person, you must be homophobic. And everything that gay people ever do is perfect and wonderful and full. You know, rainbows come out of their asses. And, you know, they're, they're, they're rare and beautiful creatures like unicorns. We're not. We're really fucked up. We're a mess, just like everybody else. Um, and gays can be right about things and gays can be wrong about things. And in this case, you know, I think Pence is, is mainly just a states' rights guy. So, um, I, uh, my only comment about conversion therapies I wish it worked um, but uh, since, since, it, since it doesn't um, daddy junior may have to be re-educated on that one uh, I don't think anyone gives too much of a fuck about the vice presidency um, I don't see this guy I mean Trump is, a, is like a freight train he's like a juggernaut there's no way this guy is dying ever let alone in office um, <laughs> <laughs> he's just—he's he's, going to go. I mean, he's going to be the longest living human being on the planet. Um, I'm not too worried about stuff like that. Um, and even if I were, I'd be far more worried uh, about a corporatist Democrat party that takes money from countries that executes homosexuals while pandering to gays back home, telling lies to homosexuals back home about evil, nasty Republicans, whilst taking the money, paying their mortgages, um, you know, with with money from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Fuck those guys. That is genuinely terrifying hypocrisy. Genuinely terrifying hypocrisy. And, and after Orlando, I went down to Orlando after that happened, you know, um, and to see left-wing celebrities, um, to see left-wing politicians, see left-wing journalists make excuses for this hateful and homophobic ideology and then to turn around and blame it on gun culture. The subtext of which was, yeah, okay, some crazy maniac Muslim might have done it, but it's really the Republicans' fault which was the message that we're giving you. Um, that scares me a hell of a lot more. Why? Because it means that there are, there are a lot more Orlandos to come. And that may be unavoidable even with Trump in the White House, but that's, that's why I'm not too worried about Pence. Uh, next question. Um, guy in the red right at the back. I'm going to make you run, Andrew. Hey, Milo. Um, I, you heard about what happened in OSU, right, with the Smallian guy? Why does this happen, like, two weeks after I'm at every campus? Like, you know, it happened at UCLA. Two weeks afterwards, some maniac comes on campus. Yes, I did. I hear that um, somebody misgendered Muhammad in class, so he went, well, a bit, um, um, he went a bit ape shit. The rebel media went down no, there. No, I'm not kidding. You know, like, a couple of weeks... No, was it in August of this year? In August of this year, this guy gave a... Um, gave an interview to a student publication saying, I hate how people just like, you know, assume things about me because I'm Muslim. Like, just because I'm Muslim, people have all these negative stereotypes of me. Three months later, he drove his car into nine people. <laughs> Having just, by the way, come out of a class about microaggressions. You do the math. Um, what was your question? Sorry. Oh, um, well, the rebel media went down there and they started asking students if they would uh, call it terrorism. Yeah. Even when they were informed that ISIS took credit for it, yeah. they still said it, you know, it needed more evidence, it wasn't terrorism, it was just a reaction. What's your opinion on that? Um, these people are idiots. Um, <laughs> deeply and desperately stupid. Uh, and they're putting gay people at risk, and they're putting women at risk, and they're putting all other kinds of minorities at risk, and they're putting America at risk. Um, when you refuse to accept the obvious truth in front of you, which is that there is a serious problem with that religion, a very serious problem with that religion. Um, and that it might be a good idea not to have any more of it in the country for a while while things like Orlando are happening and while things like that. I mean, you know, if Trump had been president, the guy would never have been in the country. He's only been here since 2014. I mean, it was an entirely avoidable attack. Now, thank God nobody died except the cunt himself, and I'm glad he's dead. Um, but... It was entirely avoidable. San Bernardino, entirely avoidable. Fort Hood, entirely avoidable. All this stuff is entirely avoidable if only we recognize the obvious truth that there is a serious problem with that religion. And that religion in particular likes to target the most vulnerable people in society that progressives pretend that they care about, and they don't. Um, and what I think about that is that these students have been so badly educated and so utterly indoctrinated by their professors that they actually believe that he was the victim in that circumstance. Did you see, did you see that, um, is it um, 
Was it San Bernardino, the couple, the, the man and woman? Did you see that story today? Like the, the Christmas party pushed them over the edge. Anyone see that headline? Sorry today. So there is new speculation from people who knew this, this murderous maniac couple that the thing that finally pushed them over the edge, the thing that turned them into murderous lunatics, was that they were expected to attend a work Christmas party. And this so offended their, their sensibilities um, because they had been taught that, that you know, multiculturalism dictates that everyone must pay obeisance to their, you know, what, to whatever. That, that was the thing, that was the last straw. A fucking Christmas party. So as a gay person, I'm very relaxed about Trump saying he wants a total ban on Muslim immigration for a while. In fact, I wish he'd throw them all out. Next. Uh, Mm, mm, mm. Where are you, Andrew? I'm going to give you an easy life. Let's go the lady at the back. I think it's a, is it a lady? Yes. Or a man with long hair. No, I think it's a lady. You can't tell these days, you know. Thanks. It makes me feel a lot better. Oh, God, it's the bloke, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck. Sorry, mate. Uh, what's even worse is I'm actually a soldier in the... Uh Oh, Army National oh Guard, so... God, are you kidding? Oh, no, 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 no. I was, like, I was pointing at somebody else. So it's not you. No, I could tell you. I Woo! could tell you. My God. No, it was somebody No, it was somebody else close to you. No, you're all right. I can tell from the hair that you're, you're a man. It's you okay. These days. We've got through it. I'm going to stop digging. Let's go. Um, before I joined the military, I was actually in a four-year relationship with someone who was a terrible social justice warrior, someone mm -hmm. who was pretty terrible. Mm-hmm. And she decided that when I left, I wasn't going to be able to be controlled anymore and broke up with me when I left. So when I first got back, I, I just want to say thank you to you because when I first got back, really, I was trying to kind of find my way in the world. And the first one of the first videos I ever saw on YouTube was of you and Joe Rogan and your interview. I definitely have to say that's, that's a great thing. Well, but you. my question is uh, this. With the appointment of uh, Matthias by our God Emperor, do you think that uh, the military is going to go away from the like sexual harassment policies that have gone kind of crazy and caused mm -hmm. problems and mm -hmm. all these liberal policies and go back to being what the military is good for, which is uh, killing the enemy and breaking their shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think we're we're some way away from my military kind of uh, wet dream of nuking Mecca. But, um, <laughs> but, fuck it, just say it. Um, <laughs> but, um, it would be nice if the sort of endless layers of middle management, the sort of engorgement of the professional general class, uh, was arrested under Trump. Um, I know that there are people around the Trump campaign who are close. My friend Eric Prince, the, the founder of Blackwater, um, has very sen they all have very sensible views on this stuff, which is that the, the, you know, the amount of bureaucracy in the armed forces in America is very surprising and very remarkable, ex ex unless you've actually looked into it and you know something. Um, so in procurement, which is you know, like buying stuff, the Ministry of Defense in England, and we're tiny compared to you, the Ministry of Defense in England employs 70,000 people in the procurement department. This is the department that decides where to buy paper clips. So it gives you some sense of how overstaffed, um, in some respects, the military can be at the top and where they, how they spend money incorrectly. Um, I hope, and I've heard so many horror stories about this, you know, the, we haven't got time to get into it really today, but the sort of women in the military, the lowering of standards, you know, you know the, the concomitant disasters that happen, um, and all of the sort of, uh, you know, the trans stuff, the equality and diversion inclusion. Look, the military is by definition not inclusive. You can't be in the military and fat. You can't be in the military and blind. You can't be in the military and, and, and be crap at any of the things that are required for you to kill people. It's kind of like religion. It is discriminatory by design and has to stay that way. And these sort of bizarre liberal diversity and inclusion rituals that require us all to pretend that we find fat people as attractive as thin people, to pretend all sorts of things that aren't true, just don't work when you have an organization that is designed to kill people and to win wars. Um, I think Trump has very smart people around him. Um, and I hope that the effect of those people will be to lessen that lunacy. Uh, yeah, I certainly hope so. Uh, anybody else? I'm going to go for as long as I'm allowed. Two more? Okay, let's go over to this side. I was genuinely pointing at somebody else. I didn't think you were... Uh, yeah, the guy in the white hat. No? Oh, the, uh, the, yeah, you, yeah. What's up, man? Uh, so, I mean, you mostly just kind of argued against, like, some made-up liberal strawmen, which is cool or whatever. Uh, 
Everyone should listen to our podcast, Boof Boys. Google it. It's better than this. Oh, it's funnier dear. too. Yeah, oh, but no, I got a question, man. I got a question. I got a question, dude. Come you call. On. You called yourself. You called. Don't, don't shut me down. You called yourself all right or whatever. I just want to know what your take is on like racial, racial IQ differences and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So who's the real uh, uh, leader of the all right? Is it you or like kind of the Richard Spencer faction? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people like you kind of skirt around the race thing, but uh, I'm mm -hmm. curious. Uh, well, I don't talk about it very much because I'm not really interested in it. Um, and I've never described myself as alt-right in any interview. So I'm grateful for the kind, grateful for the, grateful for the kind introduction, but no. Uh, um, I've never described myself as that. In fact, I've gone to many pains to avoid it because I think I'm a fellow traveler on some issues like political correctness. Um, but I, I find some of that sort of discussion quite distasteful. Um, the furthest I would go is to say that the, um, the former New York Times science correspondent wrote a book about um, you know, trying, to, trying to explode the myth that race is a social construct. A lot of what you're taught in college uh, is that you know, race is a social construct. It's something that you perform or that is imposed upon you rather than something that is innate within you. And so this book by Nicholas um, uh, Wade was trying to demonstrate there's a statistical sense in which race is real. Um, so we know from various clusters of genetic information where somebody came from from. Now that sounds like a very logical thing to say, um, but uh, he, uh, he correctly identified that, you know, that, that most higher education institutions are teaching that this, this stuff doesn't happen. We now they have the computing power to map the genome, we know that race is real in a statistical, biological sense. Now his argument in this book um, is that some of those clusters of genes can result in different sorts of behaviors, which is why different cultures don't just have different skin colors, but look differently. Um, for the IQ difference uh, stuff, uh, I have no clue. I have no reason to believe that's the case. Um, I certainly don't look at the world that way. Um, one of the many reasons I, you know, I mean, I would say the people who, the people who push that kind of stuff online absolutely hate me, by the way. Um, they uh, have declared a holy war on me. Uh, you know, they've, dem they've de uh, demanded that Breitbart fire me uh, before they will ever read it again. The white supremacists and anti-Semites on the internet fucking hate me. Um, so I, th I think, you know, having accused me in the beginning of, 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 uh, of w railing against liberal straw men, I think you are painting uh, with, with very similar brushes, sir. All right, next, please. Um, let's go. I think we have one left. Why don't we go up the back there? Yeah. First off, I want to thank you down for thank you for coming down. And thank you. you know, there's no fire alarms and no one's trying to break in here with ski masks. I'm very disappointed. We very must seem low, so boring. Low energy cameras last night. They were great. They had yeah. ski masks on last night. I think they were trying to look black for me. And um, no one has a sign for had, you um, tonight. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, they they came in in ski masks. Like it was quite exciting. They were like black combat gear and like sign these terrible signs. It was very good. It was very good. It was very low energy campus. I'm sorry to say. Uh, what was the question? Anyway, so, was the question? so my question. Uh, now that the uh, sensible people of America have won. Do you think that trend will fall over into France and Austria, who, mm -hmm. I think Austria is doing their election on Sunday as well, mm -hmm. or do you think it... Well, they're rerunning an election because it was rigged. Um, right. Of course, that doesn't happen. You know, never, <laughs> elections never get gerrymandered at all. Like your own fucking primary, you idiots. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I would say this. I've, you know, coming to this country, a country founded on values and ideas and principles, I think American patriotism is very respectable and, res and reasonable and a perfectly um, nice and, and uh, admirable thing to have, uh, sort of to be proud of America. There is a slight difference in Europe, which is that um, some of the right-wing parties in Europe are more racially charged. And some of the parties in Europe have more to do with geography and ethnicity than, than I think that, that, that nationalism in America, which is not a dirty word, um, you know, nationalism in America is more concerned with American ideals, with you know, the Constitution, First and Second Amendment. I think some nationalism in Europe is uglier. I don't disagree too much with the sort of anti-Islamic sentiments, as I think most people in the room have picked up by now, uh, of AFD in Germany, for instance. But I think Front National in France is a little, a little different. Um, so I, I, calling them the sensible people is, is going a little bit far for me. Um, however, I am very comfortable and very happy and very pleased in general with the sort of populist, nationalist, um, right-wing resurgence and libertarian resurgence um, that is happening all over the West. Uh, it started with Brexit, um, which is a very good thing, not just because it was the right thing for to do for Britain to move, but also because the left were so angry. Um, was, I mean, you know, I like to pretend that I wanted Britain to leave for all the right reasons, you know, reclaim national sovereignty, blah, 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 blah. But really, I just wanted to see the Guardian page, on, uh, Guardian front page the next day. Um, 
much the same as Trump victory here. I mean, I just wanted to read the New York Times the day after. And they didn't disappoint, did they? Uh, you know, um, I think that in Britain with Brexit and the US with Trump, um, these are perfectly admirable, reasonable, and fantastic victories. I am relatively cool. With AFD, I'm a lot more skeptical about uh, Front National. But uh, in general, this populist, nationalist, uh, libertarian, conservative right-wing movement is, um, is entirely a good thing. Getting us back to common sense. Smashing political correctness forever. Destroying the stranglehold that people who want to control what you say, do, and think have over popular culture is the single biggest fight um, that libertarians and conservatives can stage. It is the most important thing to do in culture and will remain the most important thing to do in culture for the next 30 years. And Donald Trump's uh, election is a very significant moment in that battle. It is only the first step, but it is a huge first leap, and you should be hugely proud and very happy that you've done it. So um, well done for electing him, and thank you very much for having me. Cheers.